Hello everyone. Essential to state capture is the existence of a crooked, conniving, and reciprocal relationship between certain types of businesses and politicians. We'll take a look at aspects of the state capture report. This is part four. Take a look at uh, the other parts that I did. In this one, we'll look at 15 of them. The aspects are picked from a report called the State Capture Inside Kenya's Inability to Fight Corruption. It is written by Washira Maina and you can find it on the website Africog. Okay, let's start. Politics and corruption have always been intimates in Kenya since independence. Little wonder that the first commission of inquiry appointed after independence, the 1965 Chanan Singh Mays Commission of Inquiry, was triggered by a corruption scandal involving Paul Gay. A scandal, once exposed, is followed by a tumult of indignant editorials. Nervy and protracted official stonewalling, politicians make fiery anti-corruption speeches, a few high-profile arrests and indictments are made, jubilant headlines follow. Over a period of months, the cases are throttled and indictments quietly dropped. Senior officials previously interdicted are quietly reinstated. If a new government is elected, it aggressively and restarts investigations into the mega scams of its predecessor, partly to cover up its own mega scams, partly to build its anti-corruption credentials, and partly to eliminate potential competitors in the state capture game. Procrastination on the Golden Bank, Anglo-Leasing and Eurobond scandal show is the evolution of Kenya as an institutionalized kleptocracy, that is, a system of state capture in which ruling networks and commercial partners hijack governing institutions and maintain impunity for the purpose of raiding the budget to sustain themselves in power and for the security of the regime. Eight principal characteristics of state capture. Number one, capture depends on control of the presidency and operates on the rule that no one should be allowed to threaten the president and other men of power. Goldenberg drew in the most powerful men in the Moi government, the president himself, his deputy, his security chief, and some of the most powerful members of cabinet. Given that powerful insiders risk their all once they are out of power, succession, planning, and careful pre-selection of one successor is a vital part of what keeps capture alive. If you're an insider around the presidency, you do not want to be insecure after the president leaves power. So it is important that this be collectively understood within this elite near the presidency. So number two, once the presidency is compromised by mega corruption, as Moy was by Goldenberg, Kibaki by Anglo Leasing and Uhuru by the Eurobond scandal, the whole government machinery becomes completely permissive towards corruption. Impunity becomes the glue that holds the system together and the impunity of low level functionaries is a price that bosses pay to avoid subversion from within. Number three. The success of state capture relies on parallel informal structures based on the presidency that subvert the constitutional institutions whilst maintaining the outside forms of those institutions. These informal networks are serviced with cash and loyalty. There is presidency, judiciary, and legislature. In Africa, we have another arm of government called informal presidency in state house. The shadow state operates from state house. The formal state operates from office of the president. Scandals like Goldenberg, Anglo Leasing, and Eurobond never get resolved because if Moy benefited and transitioned peacefully to another group of capture, Resolving Goldenberg would be jailing Moy, and that is antithetical, directly opposed to the goals of capture. It can't be resolved, neither can it be allowed to die because it compromises a succeeding regime that it's not fighting corruption. 4. Control of judiciary and all independent offices is crucial to successful state capture. If this cannot be controlled, through bribes if possible or coercion if bribes fail, then budget cutbacks can be used to undermine their effectiveness. Personalized attacks on individual judges can also be considered. Number five, police can become as wealthy as their appetites allow by preying on the little guys. The police are the eyes of a captured state and they must be kept sweet. They are allowed to be predators on the citizens as much as they want, as long as they satisfy two conditions. 
don't become excessive second funnel money upwards the old view that depends on president giving money to people is actually mistaken in a captured state the police collect money and funnel it upwards it is the sacrament of submission it is a guarantee that they are loyal and nothing will be done to them police constables uh, greatest protectors are the seniors because the seniors live off them six regime fixers high level officials and close allies must benefit from corruption and junior functionaries must understand that their ability to pass payments up the chain is a sacrament of submission and without it they are vulnerable seven big projects are good politics and good business for capture state capture depends on financing mega projects and under spending on services unless these services have high spend on equipment devolution is not good because it doesn't allow large chunks of money for capture it's not attractive enough for the business elite that profit for capture eight when in doubt the state capture get busy if you are not sure something could go wrong get into activity launch a task force a commission of inquiry propose a le new legislation the more outrageous the better to keep people busy fighting a law that will never be enacted there you have it so as long as you protect our interests you can do what you want join me as i look at part five and the last part of aspects of the state capture report Thank you to all my subscribers. If you haven't had a chance, click on the subscribe button at the bottom of the video. And then on the right, there's a bell. Click on that so that you may be able to know when a new video arrives. Okay, thank you. See you. Bye.